Hey, what's up, nerds? I have a special edition of Math Hammer for all of you. It is Basegate. Uh, so, there was a quote-unquote suggested base size chart released from Games Workshop that has everybody all in a tizzy, and um, it's suggested. A lot of people are kind of taking it as mandatory. Um... I'm anticipating a lot of TOs are going to basically be imposing this as mandatory in bigger events anyway. Uh, maybe have a little bit of slack um, and maybe make some adjustments to some of the things that seem like they're long, uh, wrong. Um, there's definitely a big difference between square bases and round bases. I'm not going to go like too deep into that, but... Um, you know, virtually all of the round bases are larger than their square base equivalents. Like a, a 20 millimeter square turns into a 25 millimeter round. A 25 millimeter square turns into a 32 millimeter round and, and so on and so forth. Um, so the area that a round base takes up compared to its square base equivalent uh, is much greater. Um, and especially in diameter, there's typically a big difference. Um, the math of this is a little bit complicated because pi is coming to visit. Uh, but uh, I think we can get through this without uh, really getting too crazy into the math piece. Um, I think it's important that people understand that base sizes are actually really important and it may seem nitpicky. But I'm going to demonstrate later on that, like, this this is important. And I think going forward, now that we have this suggested base size chart, um, I'm going to go ahead and be controversial and say we really need, now that we're in this new second edition world where you're measuring from the base technically, well, if you're measuring from the base, not from the model, then the size of the base matters. Because if you change the size of the base, it changes how that model is going to play. And for some things, it's a much bigger issue than others. Uh, sometimes it's kind of six of one half a dozen of the other. It's not that big of a deal. Maybe it's an aesthetic difference, whatever. But it actually like mathematically makes a difference in the game very significantly for certain things. So it matters a lot. And I think people that are complaining about it, um, really need to pay attention to, I understand that from an aesthetic perspective, you want your base size base to be whatever you want it to be. Um, and if you're not, like, a hard-edge competitive player, then it doesn't really matter that much. But if you are really gunning for top tables at big tournaments and base sizes are not going to be enforced, then you can very easily gain a big advantage for putting your models on a different size base than what it theoretically should be on. So, just some quick math. This is something that I've noticed a lot of people get wrong. Um, I, one inch is equal to 25.4 millimeters. Or otherwise, 25 millimeters is slightly less than one inch. That's really important. That means that models on a 25 millimeter base can, as long as everything is in base to base contact, like the front rank is base to base with the enemy model, and then the next rank is base to base with them, they're going to get two ranks in with a one inch weapon. So I've just noticed a lot of people just casually make this mistake um, and sometimes I don't even catch it and I'm not paying attention. 
Um, but there's a lot of situations where, yeah, technically you should be getting in like twice as many attacks as people are making. And I don't know if it's ignorance or hasty measurement, but the fact that that 25 millimeters of the base size is so close to one inch can make it matter. When there's a 32 millimeter base or a larger base than that, then it really stops being relevant. Um, but let's take a quick look here. So this is just the size relationships between bases. Um, this is looking at the total area that the base covers. And you'll notice that, you know, it, there's a, kind of a pattern here to how these things are increasing. It, they're basically increasing in like a common ratio. Um, the round bases are going up about 25% per base size in diameter, and it's increasing about 50% in total area on average. Um, then similarly on ovals, your uh, length is, you know, your, each base size is going up 15 millimeters in length, and the ratio is uh, roughly that the width or the, the length is like about 1.7 times the width, like rounded to the nearest number that kind of makes sense. So it, you'll notice like all of the, the ovals have common ratios and they have this same like total area increase averaging around 50% as well between them. Um, so as you increase base sizes, like you're really substantially increasing the chunk of the battlefield that that model is taking up. So, and I call this the painfully obvious because this can cause some people so much pain and I have seen people just like rage quit games in tournaments because of the way a table is set up that just completely screws them over. Uh, some bases are really super big. Um, the uh, Maw Crusher is a great example of a base that's really big and it's hard to get it to land where you want it to land. Um, especially when you have so many Age of Sigmar tables that are really dense with terrain, have tons of stuff going on, and if someone that is putting the table together is not paying enough attention, they could really screw somebody over. Or maybe they're doing it intentionally to make it difficult to do something in particular uh, in an area. So sometimes large models are going to have a really hard time moving around the table because they're very restricted as to where you can fit them. Uh, and they have to get around things. They can't fit between certain things. Uh, and then units with small bases or monsters and heroes with small bases, they can maneuver much more easily around. They can Things that fly can land on top of terrain features much more easily. Um, it, it's much more easier for like a 40 millimeter base to like land on top of a house than it is for like a hundred millimeter base to land on top of a house because you're just going to be bigger than the house and it doesn't make any sense. Um, so that's like the beat you over the head, obvious stuff about base sizes. Um, here is, I realize this is probably all kind of in the wrong order, but we're talking about like reach with models before. This is just kind of a chart of, you know, how your reach compared to your base size is going to allow you to have more ranks in combat. Um, so I'll let you look this over for a second, but you'll see in general that having a 25 millimeter base is super favorable when you increase your reach. A 32 millimeter base is also pretty favorable on reach. Um, you know, if you have a two inch range weapon, you're going to be able to get a second rank in. 
Um, and then after that, like, it's, you know, you're just fighting with the front dudes, basically. Um, so uh, this is just so, something interesting to think about. Um, a lot of times I've seen people just sort of assume that, you know, a 25 millimeter base model with a one inch reach only gets one rank in and generally they're going to get two unless they're not base to base so again like this is one of those places where base size matters if you're putting something on 25 millimeter bases that's supposed to be on 32s you're going to get a, a lot more models into combat um the issue that i've seen with uh ogres that people have brought up that um you know previously they were on 40 millimeter bases and the new chart says they're on 50s um you'll see here in terms of like reach they're not really making that big of a difference between the 40 and the 50 um their total area that they take up it definitely does go up uh you know it goes up by 25 percent, but it's not earth shattering uh, in terms of, like, you're not getting more, like, ranks into combat. Like, that's just not a thing that's happening. Um, so, here is what it looks like for getting models into combat. Um, a 25mm base, 5 models wide, is going to be 125mm wide, or about 5 inches. Um... So I just kind of, you know, went down the chart. Feel free to pause the video and examine the chart if you want. It, it's relatively simple math. Um, and then on the flip side, I wanted to kind of examine, like, how much you get in a condensed area. So in an area that's about 6 inches wide, you're going to get about 6 25 millimeter base models in. You're going to get maybe five 32 millimeter models in maybe four th 40 millimeter models in uh three fifties and like not even three like two and a half so real realistically only two uh on 60 millimeters so in terms of like how many models you can get into combat in a certain area your base size really matters a lot. That's the thing I'm just going to repeat over and over again and beat it into people's heads. Base size matters. Base size matters. Base size matters. Um, so here's where things get a little weird in ways that you don't expect. And this particularly applies to um, heroes and monsters. Although, really, you can kind of apply this conceptually to any unit with a ranged attack. Um, so we're going to talk about, like, how much area, AoE being area of effect, that certain abilities have. And you can think about this in terms of a missile attack, in terms of magic, in terms of command abilities like static abilities that bubble out um and just quickly I, I just have here the area of a circle an area of an oval area of a circle is pi times the radius squared area of an oval is similarly you know if you have a perfect ellipse it's pi times half the length times half the width which is a and b um, so it's still basically pi times the radius squared, but your your radii from different positions are different lengths. So here is a very complicated chart with lots of numbers on it. So this is, let's say you have a six inch bubble effect. You know, six inches around your hero um, gets, I don't know, some sort of ability. A, a good example is the uh, Nurgle Harbinger of Decay. In a seven-inch bubble around him, 
uh, he grants a five up save uh, for damage. So the size base that's a, that's on changes the total area that that ability affects. So I kind of broke this down where you have your top line or the, the very top line across is the millimeter size of the bases. The next line down is in inches, the area of the base. So I did a conversion to inches, then calculated the area. Um, it's just a lot easier to calculate all of this in the same units. So I broke it down to inches first, since then we're going to add inches onto it. So then the gross AOE is the area of the base plus the area of effect. So like that, that total circle or ellipse that's being created with that bubble. And then the net AOE, that is showing you the difference in how much of the battlefield outside of that model is being affected by that ability. So you'll see as your base size goes up, the total area of the battlefield that an ability impacts also goes up. And it goes up pretty dramatically. And this is just an example with a six inch range. Just so we had like a number to work with. Um, but imagine this on something with say like a spell commonly would be 18 inch range. So you're going to have a much bigger difference because we're talking about area, which is, um, not a linear relationship with how, uh, things are going to increase. Um, you have a geometric increase in area as the radius increases. So what's very important to point out here is if you have a hero that has an ability that broadcasts out or even just a, a, a command ability with a range, well, a, something with a larger base is going to be able to affect more of the battlefield potentially with that ability. Because like the point that you're measuring out that six inches from, like it's a donut and that donut grows and it stays that same six inch thickness, but it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger as the base size grows. The, the fun thing that I found here the bottom chart is your uh, oval bases. And the fun thing I found was I had my Harbinger of Decay on a 75 by 42, and he should be on a 60. And you'll notice that the total area difference is almost identical. It's like less than a 1% difference. But interestingly enough you have a difference in shape so you can pull some shenanigans on a 75 by 42 that you can't with a 60 like you can turn him sideways and broadcast that bubble out wider um so you can really see here why base sizes i think are going to be so critical especially for your heroes with command abilities your wizards um, any heroes and monsters that have like a broadcast effect have a missile attack like thinking about it in terms of magic and missile attacks like this is the total area of the battlefield that they can reach out and touch at any given time with their spell or their missile attack so as the base size goes up they're able to potentially target more stuff and that's kind of a big deal. Um, and that's why these base sizes, I think, are so important. And I think it, there are some questionable things in the base chart that was published. I encourage everybody to email Games Workshop and politely suggest 
that they take a look at some things that um, seem inconsistent. Uh, for example, uh, two different models being built out of the same kit that they're saying should be on two different base sizes. Um, that sort of thing just doesn't make sense. Um, and the base size that something is on really can kind of dictate its overall value. In thinking about this, you know, my free guild general on a horse, I was previously running him on a 75 by 42, and the base chart says 60 by 35, and so that means his radius that he can broadcast out his command ability is less because he's on a smaller base. So that means it, that to me gives me greater incentive to run two of them instead of one, um, which I know kind of sounds odd, but it, it's, it's just enough. I think that it's going to matter it to some people. It's like splitting hairs. Like, uh, it's not that big of a deal, but for competitive play, I think it matters. All of this stuff is something you need to think about for competitive play. Um, that's why something like um, the Great Unclean one is really powerful in part because his base is huge. Um, the artifact that makes your opponent re-roll their successful sixes to hit, you throw that on a Great Unclean one, and that bubble is enormous compared to it being on, like, I don't know, uh, uh, Lord of Plagues. He's on, like, a 40. Like, he just is affecting so much more of the battlefield with that 12-inch bubble on the pie plate that the Great Unclean one is on. Yeah, just as an example. Archaon, also a good example of like, he's on a, an enormous base and that can give him problems for maneuverability but <coughs> it's going to give him some really powerful effect because he's a wizard and he can cast spells, so he's going to be able to affect a lot more of the battlefield because he has such a large base size. So, conclusion... Base sizes matter. I'll say it again. Base sizes matter. And I'm, in a way, I'm really glad that Games Workshop has published a base size chart. Um, because I think for competitive play, if we're measuring from the base now instead of from the model, the base matters. And if you don't have standardized bases, you're going to let people have unfair advantages. All of those Stormcast on 40 millimeter bases, if you base them all on 32s, because you can kind of squeeze them all onto 32s, suddenly you can get a lot more Liberators into combat with your Vanguard wing. You might not be able to defend as large of an area with them, but you can be much more on offense with them. Larger bases on your heroes and monsters will let you have a greater area of effect for their missile weapons, for their magic, for their command abilities, for any other AoE effects that they have. Um, on the flip side of that, Something that really, like, where that's not important. Or where that's not as critical of an issue. Say you have a monster that is really just for combat. Like Scarbrand is a good example. If you put Scarbrand on a base that's smaller than he is supposed to be on, he's more maneuverable. And your opponent, he has less circumference around the outside, which means there's your opponent can get less models into combat with him. 
because there is less space around that circumference for them to get their base in on. So it's actually an advantage for a combat monster or a combat hero to have a smaller base. Like, that's part of the reason why, like, Valkia the Bloody is so good. I mean, maybe she's not anymore. I don't know. One of the advantages of Valkia the Bloody, let me rephrase that, one of the advantages of Valkia is that she's on a very small base. So, she's very maneuverable, and she packs a big punch. So, that's about all I have for you guys. Um, This is my emergency math hammer intervention. Hopefully, it has been informational. Hopefully, standardized basing will be a thing, because I think it will really matter. Anywho, kids, have a good one.